Is the Douro River and Portugal on your travel to-do list in the near future? Stay tuned as we look at three popular river cruise lines cruising the Douro. My special guest today is Sherry Clark, owner of PT Travel. Sherry is an avid river cruiser, and her team of expert travel advisors have been needing the needs of their clients across the country for the last 20 plus years. Hi, Sherry. Welcome back to RTE Travel Talk. Hey, Ken. It's great to be back. Good to see you again. Good to have you with us, Sherry. So listen, one country that's getting very, very popular and is becoming a river cruise destination is Portugal. We're getting a lot of questions about the Douro River cruises, and I believe it's getting to be a very popular choice right now. I kind of like to spend a little time today talking about Portugal and discuss three of the popular cruise lines that are sailing the Douro, which would be obviously Ama Waterways, Avalon, and of course, Viking River Cruises. How does that sound? Sounds great. Um, You know, Ken, you're right. Portugal is becoming such a hot destination. So hot, in fact, that I just got back from there. I made it uh, my 65th country seen uh, just this past September and uh, first part of October. Um, So it's a beautiful country, lots of variation within the country, small enough. So it's really easy to kind of see in one trip and certainly worth going to. It became one quickly one of my uh, top countries that I've ever been to. So it's absolutely worth seeing. And that Doro River is amazing. So can you give us a brief uh, overview of what a Doro River cruise would look like, Sherry? Yeah, I sure can. So, um, most of the itineraries on the Doro on any river cruise line are going to be about the same. I mean, a river is a river. Right. There's only so many cities. There's only so many towns that you can go to. So most of them are going to start in Porto and end, you do a round trip to Porto, or some of them will end at the end of the river, and then you can go on to Madrid. If you know the, the country of Portugal at all, the, the Doro River kind of goes through the top third of the of the country and it goes west to east so it's really you know not that different depending on what lines you are they're all basically going to the same okay uh, and then some of them actually will also start in lisbon and i recently spent some time in lisbon and if you have that extra three days to do a pre in lisbon I absolutely recommend it because within Lisbon, then you get to see some other little areas like Sintra that are also in that area. And it's a great way to spend some time there as well. You'll see, get to see a little bit of, of, of that topography as you go up and down that coast. Right on. So correct me if I'm wrong, Doro River Cruises for the most part are, are seven days, right? That is correct. That okay. is correct. And then they'll do a pre and a post. So a it makes, it, makes it can make really good sense to either do a pre or a post in Lisbon then to, to get a... A good feel for the country. Absolutely. So most of the cruise lines that we're talking about today will do a three-day extension in Lisbon. And then some of them, again, will go on to Madrid. You can do right. both. So then, let's face it. The right. hardest part, in my opinion, of traveling is that flight over there. Typically, it's the most expensive, too. I mean, it's getting very expensive to fly there. Right. So if you're going to Europe, make it worth your time. Give it a little extra days. It's a long t- flight to go over there just for seven days. Absolutely makes sense to do that pre and post. On the pre, it gives you time to get over the jet lag, and you're gonna you're you're spending the same amount of money whether you fly there for seven days or fly there for ten. You're not kidding. And there's sometimes yeah. if you if you look at it, you know, you can do about some of those off days, and the traveling is not as hard. It may not save you much money, yeah. but I'd rather fly on a Tuesday than a Sunday or a Saturday any day of the week. So, yeah. so let's look at the three cruise lines we're speaking about. Mm-hmm. Alma Waterways, Avalon, and Viking. They all right. sail the Doro. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you kind of mentioned that they're basically the same, but, you know, there must be some differences between those ones. Can we talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. So okay. when I said they're the same, it's really the itineraries are the same. Right. Okay. I, will, I will tell you that every river cruise line has a different personality. And that's really when it's worth talking to um, travel agent. Find someone right. who knows A, your personality or will at least listen to you and listen to what's important to you. And then they'll match you up with that right, right personality on the ship. And every, even within every cruise line, every ship has a little bit of a different personality. We ask a lot of questions about what's important to the client because it's not always about budget. It's not always about the money. That's important. We understand that, but really it's the value. What are you getting for it? What all does it include? So within AMA, 
Avalon and uh, Viking, there are different personalities, uh, different strengths, different weaknesses. Some of the things that I like about each one with Ama Waterways, they're very well known for their food. So if any, if any of my foodies, that's super important to them. That's where I would go. Avalon actually has one of the cooler staterooms around. And I don't know why they all don't do this, to be honest with you, Ken. Their beds actually face the balconies. So if I'm lying in bed and I raise my hat up, I'm looking out the balcony window. I think that's super cool. Most of them, you're, I'm just going to turn the side. You're at the side. You got to look that way, right? Yeah. And it's, it's such a minor difference, but whoever designed the Avalon ships, kudos to them for thinking of that one difference. I've um, heard of those. They call those the panorama suites, right? They do. And it is because you sit up and you're literally looking at the river and the panoramic. And that's really, I mean, you don't spend a lot of time on your balcony, but it's sure nice in the morning to wake up, open those blinds and see that river passing by. And Avalon does have a brand new ship on right. the Doro. And then you got Viking. Of course, Viking's well known, has a huge reputation. They sometimes will stay a little bit longer in the ports and they're usually the price points just a little bit better. So it's because they have a lot of inventory out there. Okay. So those are the kind of major three differences. If I had to, if I had to like give you one shot of each one, what's the difference? Is it, that's what I would say. Okay. So you mentioned that the river cruises start in Porto and in a, in a lot of cases they start in Porto and end in Porto. Mm -hmm. So you're essentially saying sailing the same river twice. How do, the, how do the cruise lines handle that? Did it just go up so far and turn around or what, what happens with that? That is exactly what happens. And again, you got to look at the itinerary. Some of them will end at the end of the river as well. Uh, I have done a round trip on the Seine. So I, I didn't feel like it was a redundant thing. You know, there's just some rivers that are smaller and you got to do a round trip to get back to where you came from. Right. And you, they'll, they'll stop at different places. And the Douro, you do have to sail during the day, which is unique. A lot of the river cruise lines, you sell at night. But because okay. of the river, now, that doesn't hurt anything. Because let me tell you, the Douro in of itself is a UNESCO heritage site. And I'm talking right. the whole river. So there's a, there's a valley there that is really gorgeous. And so, of course, you want to be up and seeing that. So it's not a terrible thing that they sail during the day, during the, during the daylight hours. It is certainly something you need to know about. So there's a lot more opportunity going up and coming back for laying back and just seeing it cruising. Right. And that's a great thing about cruising. You know, you can have great days. And again, if you go in, in um, September, which is when they do the the harvesting of the wine, that's always a fun fun time as well, right? No. So if we're thinking of sailing on the on the Doro, when is the best time of year? Is September the best time of year to sail the Doro? March through November is when they sail. You know, October is going to get a little bit of rainy season. Now, in general, Portugal has tons of sunshine, so their rainy season is not like our rainy seasons right here in the states, some of our areas. But September is a great time to go. I think traveling to Europe anytime on those shoulder seasons. So think anytime the kids are in school, those are our shoulder seasons. You're not going to have as, although this is not a kid in terms of um, trip. <laughs> I'm just talking about in general, when people travel is yep. that summer high in period. So if you can go shoulder season, which is March through end of May or end of August through November, anytime, you're going to have less crowds in general in the airports. The prices are going to be a little better. The river cruising in September seems to be a peak for pricing. But again, talk to your travel agent and find out what's your best time. And then they can talk to you about each line and what's going on. But I will tell you, Doro River Cruises sell out over a year in advance. Do they? Oh, yes. So you have to be prepared for that. If you want to go on the Dura Road, do not sleep and think, oh, I'll wait for a deal to come up. They sell out. They sell out quick because you're looking at these ships only have about 100, 100 to 110 people on board. So there's right. not a lot of room. Right. So because of that, these ships, and it's such a hot destination right now, these ships sell out. So it's worthwhile to start planning probably a year and a half or two years out. Yeah. So we're already um, seeing ships for 2025. You need to be absolutely planning a year and a half out, now, especially if you want one particular cruise line. If you're open to a lot of cruise lines, then you're fine. But like Ama only has two river cruises. Viking has only four on the river. Avalon only has the one. If you want that new Avalon ship, it's brand new. Just hit the market. You need to get going now for 25 if they even have space. I don't know. Right. So if this is if this is on your bucket list, don't wait. Get don't. with your yeah, get with your expert travel advisor and, and get something booked. 
You really need to. I yeah. mean, it's you don't want to be disappointed. You know, a lot of people think if they wait, they're going to get a last minute deal, right? This is what people are kind of trained to think. Yeah. That doesn't happen with river cruising. River cruising prices the best out early. They get early booking deals. And again, if you're working with a travel advisor and they happen to drop the price for some strange reason, typically we can get that lower rate. So you're at no disadvantage of booking early. But I got to tell you, when I book river cruises, I'm normally booking a year and a half, a year out, and I've never seen, oh, let's drop. Let me do something about it. It's usually gone. <laughs> not right. even drop. Not that it's right. gone up. I mean, this space is not there. It's just gone, right? So as I understand, one of the differences that you could come across between these three river cruise lines is the shore excursions. Are they included in your fare on all three? And if so, how many are, are included with each one? So typically they'll include one, sometimes two, depending on where they are in the port. One thing you do need to know about the Douro is that it's some of the ports, you have to take a longer bus ride than on other rivers. Okay. The way the Douro is design, the way it's built, you would only have a few that are really riverside, which that's kind of one of the unique things about river cruising. Hey, I'm going to pop off and I'm just going to go right to the city. Right walk right into the town. That's a lovely thing about river cruising. On this one, you are going to have to bus. I mean, and sometimes those bus rides can be, you know, an hour away. So be prepared for that. Know that that's part of it. If your expectations are there and you understand that, then, you know, it won't be a surprise to you. To answer your question, Ken, all of them do include one. And again, sometimes two, it gets, it depends on where. If sometimes there'll be a morning bus ride, then there'll be an afternoon. Most of them will include bikes where you can get on a bike and, and you know, and ride in the afternoon just on your own up and down the river. There are some cruise lines like AMA who offer some more upscale ones at certain ports that you can pay additional, and it's a small price, maybe 50 to 100 euro, depending on what it is. Mm -hmm. There might be a little extra something. AMA also has themed, wine-themed cruises. Actual, the cruises where you have a sommelier on the cruise, where they're talking more about, I mean, all the river cruises are going to serve the local wines, but this is more wine-focused than the other cruises. And let me cool. tell you a quick thing about wines in Portugal that I recently learned. Have you ever heard of green wine? No. Okay, listen. I drink a lot of wine on these trips. <laughs> yeah. I'll be the first to admit. I'll, I mean, listen, I'm a full service travel agent. I like to try it all for my clients, right? Yeah. Um, you just, the, the things you have to do. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's a struggle, kid. Right. Um, but we're at a winery recently in Portugal, and they said, Have you tried the green wine? And I'm like, mm, Never heard of green wine. I'm wondering if I'm going to like that. Yeah. It's specific to Portugal. It's delicious. So think of a very crisp, light wine. And it we absolutely loved it. It's you know, it's just something, again, that's unique to Portugal. So the things like that that you get on these river cruises are really a unique, unique experience that you can't see anywhere else in the world. Wow, that's amazing. So circling back, for folks that have sailed in on river cruises in Europe, from what I understand from what you just told me about the uh, ports that they stop along the way with the Doral, number one, the, the amount of shore excursions are probably going to be could be limited because of the distance involved in getting people to and from correct so that, that that's probably a fair a fair difference and something to be aware of sure and a lot of the and if i understood what you told me a lot of these places that they stop it's not like like for example rudesheim along along the rhine you just get off and you walk into the town right that's that's not the case on along the doro in a lot of cases it's correct it's correct. Right. So to let, so they're, so everybody's, if you're aware of that, again, it's not a big surprise. Yeah. Um, I don't think it should let, keep you from going. Oh my gosh. It's so gorgeous. If you didn't even go into any of the towns just to see that river as you're cruising along and that scenic, I mean, look at the pictures of it. It's just stunning. And it's a UNESCO world heritage site for a reason. It is the oldest wine producing area in Europe. So it's certainly worth going to see. And they do more than just port wines. Most people think of Portugal as port wines. But as I just said, that we talked about um, the green wines, and they also have table wines that are very nice. Okay, okay. So we talked about the, the similarities and the differences between the three lines. And you kind of mentioned that AMA is well known for their dining. Mm -hmm. uh, Avalon. I've heard that Avalon is, would probably be a good choice for folks that are perhaps maybe a little bit more active. Would that be would that be fair, Cher? Avalon does have what they call an active itinerary, which they do more active. So you have to see if they have it on Porto in Porto on that itinerary. But even with AMA, for instance, they'll have 
the different levels of walkers. So you have your, the walkers who don't want to walk as fast. You have your medium walkers, like just a normal, and then you have your active walkers. So as opposed to taking a tram up to the top of that, you know, up the mountain to see a church or something, they'll, they'll hike up it. So, so I think that a lot of the river cruises are understanding these days that they need to include some more active users. Now, I just got off of a river cruise. I didn't see many people doing the active walking. Most of us were doing just the regular walking, but they did have that slower walking for somebody who might be on a walker or can't walk very fast. So it is nice that they are seeing that there's differences in our travelers and they're offering more active. Looking at the three lines, the atmosphere on board, Sherry, what can we expect? Is it much the same as you'd find on a river cruise in Europe or do they bring on specific people to talk about. You mentioned that it's Mm -hmm. a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Do they bring on special speakers and that sort of thing to educate people? If I have any, it's not even a complaint. If I have anything that I'd like the least about a river cruise is the lack of entertainment and or cultural um, talks. Um, Yes, they'll talk about every port. They typically do not bring on anybody. Every once in a while they do. I don't know on this particular lines exactly who they're going to be bringing on for next year. But if that's important to you, please mention that to your travel expert so they can check into that, you know, particular dates and what is available. So there might be a one-off occasion where they have some talks, uh, speakers on there. It's not the norm. The norm are they bring in local musicians and the cruise director talks about the ports on um, the day before. That's the norm. Okay. On all lines, yeah. So especially on the Doro, the river cruise itself and the atmosphere is, is, is really about the location. And, and what you're going to see on, along the river. Yeah, it is. Just know it's different than a, even a small ocean cruise. Well, but it's certainly different than, an, than a large ship. But what river cruises in general start trending toward are those of us who have cruised on right. the ocean liners. And we're kind of yeah. tired of the crowds, right? Yeah. And we want to see some of that uh, more interior portion of Europe. And yeah. this is what it allows us to do. Unpack once have some amazing views, incredible service, no hassles getting on and off the ship. They know you by day two, sometimes by the day. I mean, I walked on the ship and they were like, oh, Miss Clark, good to see you. I'm like, oh my gosh, (laughs) our reputation precedes me. But they've already, (laughs) you know, they see the people that are coming on, they know, and they're looking for you. So it's a really nice thing to have at a certain age. We just want a little bit more ease to our life, right? So in other words, what you're, what you're saying is the atmosphere is laid back. You proceed at your own pace, informal. Um, mm-hmm. We're not, we're not going to be doing getting dressed for dinner. Or just Everything's just laid back and you move at your own pace. Very much so. It's very much if you call it what we call a country club, a country club elegance, right? So men don't have to wear a tie. You might want to bring a sport coat if that's your jam, if you enjoy wearing a sport coat. For the most part, you know, a very easy wardrobe to take. You don't have to worry about it. You know, comfortable walking shoes during the day, comfortable attire in the evening, you know, uh, slacks and a long sleeve shirt for guys or, you know, a collared shirt. And for the ladies, you know, a, a basic dress or black slacks, you're totally fine. So in general, Sherry, if we like, kind of line the three of them up, what's included with your Doro River Cruise? Are gratuities included, excursions, wine and beer at dinner? How does that work? And and it, does it vary by, by line? For the most part on those three lines, they're pretty much all the same. And you're going to have gratuities you can add on. Of course, all your meals, they're yeah. going to include beer and wine and alcohol sometimes with your, with your meals. Ama has a one hour happy hour that's included before every dinner. And that's when you could have a, a, an adult beverage if you want of your choice. It's included. So whatever they usually serve a beverage of the day, but you can get anything you want that is included. You also, again, can add on your gratuities. All the excursions are included. Your uh, tipping to your tour guides will always be extra on these. So you need to okay. be prepared to have a euro or two in your pocket, up to five euros, whatever, however long it is to give that tour guide that you take. But for the most part, just about everything's included. So when you get there, you're not going to have this horrendous bill at the end because you've been nickeled and dimed to death. So be on the lookout. If you're looking for Duro for for 25, because I don't know if 24 is going to be available. Right. You know, look for specials like that where they're giving you an add-on of some sort. Right. But again, Sherry, that's where it pays to have the services of, of an expert travel advisor in your corner who on any given day has access to more of these uh, amenities or specials that may actually come across 
come across their desk, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And here's what I always like to share with people. If I call Viking, Viking's job is to sell me one of their ships. Right. That's their job. If I call a travel expert, their job is to listen to you, look and see what is best for you out there, compare, give you the best deals, give you the best value for what you're looking for and show you all that's out there. So then you're going to get two or three choices from an expert whose only job is really to please you, is to fit you with the right river cruise. Whereas if I'm calling that cruise line, their job is to put you on one of their ships, right? And the other advantage of booking with a travel expert is that you can reach them quickly. That makes total, total sense. So now the $64,000 question, mm -hmm. how do these three lines compare in price point? for this itinerary? You know, and again, it's going to be like anything. They're going to fluctuate. But right. in general, Ama is going to probably be your most costly, then Avalon, and then Viking. That's just the way it runs. Perhaps not by much. Perhaps there's a special. I will tell you that the reason for that is one has more space ratio per passenger than the other. So there's some things that are really important to people. And again, you just have to speak to that client. If that's all those things aren't important, if they don't mind being a little bit more crowded, then it's okay to go with a, with a line that may not cost as much. But it's all about value and what, what a person really wants. I think what you're, what you're telling me is for people that are kind of doing their own research, don't necessarily accept what you see online at first, at first blush because on some, on some of these lines, you know, you could have more people on board, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, there could be less included. So I think the, the lead in price may not be the final price is what I'm trying to say. And right. you, you, you can find that. There. I mean, really yeah. it's, it's comparing them, like really ask for the comparison. I mean, we talked about three, but there's four or five more, you know, sure. that are out yeah. there. So, yeah. you know, get with somebody who knows river cruising, somebody who's exactly. been on rivers. So if you talk with a travel advisor, they don't have to have been on the Duro, but one that's tried several of the lines. I mean, in our agency, we have over 20 agents and on most of the river cruise lines. So if I haven't been on one, then I talk with my colleague that has been. And then we, you know, we, we, we are able to kind of talk about those differences a little bit more upfront. I mean, I can tell you the food's good because they tell me it's good, but I've tasted it. I, I totally get it. <laughs> well, Sherry, this is absolutely super information. Is there anything else you might like to add before we wrap up? I just say don't sleep on Portugal. If I can real quickly just speak on something, Ken, we were yep. in Portugal. We had our, our adult children flew over there to meet us. And we went to the south of Port uh, the south yeah. of Portugal, which is the Algarve. We haven't right. talked, talked about that yet, but it's absolutely divine. I mean, just stunning. The the beaches and the cliffs there that are behind the beach. Think Hawaii type cliffs around, um, and wow. but the beaches are stunning. Yeah. Absolutely breathtaking. So if you're going to Portugal and you're doing the and you're doing the Douro and you have the time, really consider hitting up the south part of Portugal as well. When we were there, our son went to Porto and then he trained down and met us in the Argarve when we met there. Very easy train ride, or you can also rent a car. We actually rented a car to go back to Lisbon. Super easy country to get around. And there's just beautiful scenery turning every which way. So uh, don't sleep on Portugal. If you're going to go and you have the time, look at doing the southern part as well as your to add it on to your Doro River cruise. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, Sherry, this is absolutely grand information. If folks wanted to get hold of you or one of your your travel advisors, what's the best way to reach out? So I believe you're scrolling out um, our, my email on the bottom, which is always the easiest way. Uh, but you can also call, leave a message, 615-800-7239. Um, if I personally am out of the country or get to you, again, one of our 20 agents would be happy to get back with you. And you can also find us on our website at pttravel.com or picturethistravel.com. Either one will get you there to us. Fantastic. Fantastic. I'll leave those links in the description for folks that want to reach out to you. But I always have to ask, where? Are you, what's next on your bucket list? Where, where are you off to next? I just have to hide <laughs> my head because, our, well, I'm actually going on the Caribbean next week. So that's exciting. I'm going on Virgin <laughs> Voyages. Maybe I can come back and talk to you about that. My first time on that ocean cruise line. Well, I look forward to seeing some pictures and hearing all about your adventures on Virgin Voyages. We'll have <laughs> to have you back sometime to do a, a a review. How does that sound? I think that sounds great. We'd love to talk again. 
Oh, perfect. So with that, Sherry, I'm just going to wish you safe and happy cruising on all your future adventures and travels. May the wind always be at your back. And I hope to see you on a Lido deck sometime soon. Same thing to you, Ken. Thank you for having me. Take care. Thanks. Bye. And that about wraps it up for today, folks. A very special thanks to my guest, Sherry Clark of PT Travel. If you'd like to reach out to Sherry or one of her advisors about a river cruise in Portugal, I will leave her contact information in the description. If you'd like to reach us with a suggestion for a future interview or a question, you can simply send a question to questions at realtravelexperts.com, visit our website, realtravelexperts.com, or simply leave a comment. We always respond. And as always, folks, if you enjoyed this content, a like, subscribe, and a ring of the bell is certainly appreciated and helps us to spread the word. So until next time, happy travels. Happy travels.